Hey everybody, it's Paul Grossman, the Dark Arts Wizard, and today I've got just under 10 minutes to explain Selenium and Cucumber. So let's get started. There's four levels in the automation framework to consider. Your feature file, which isn't exactly code, it's actually text that gets interpreted by step definitions that is broken down into page steps, and then at the page level it's interacted with, uh, with the application under test. The feature files are written in Gherkin, and that only requires you to memorize four words, given, when, then, and the word and. Given means that we're setting up some prerequisite, when means we're performing some action, and then is validating some result. The word and is just replicating whatever came before it. So if we said given some prerequisite, the and would be adding some additional prerequisite. The when by perform an action could be followed by another action, and the then I should see some result, and I should see some additional result means that we are replicating what came before. Let's take a look at a sample here. Given the username admin, when I log in, then I should see administrative mode on the landing page, and I should see welcome Paul on the landing page. There is some reusability going on here, even though this starts with then and this starts with and. This is exactly the same lines of code that it will execute. I should see something on the landing page is exactly equivalent on both of these lines. So let's start off with taking a look at Gavin. Given the username admin, well, admin is being glued into this step definition. Given the username is something over here. How is this being glued together? Well, it's being glued by a test runner, which is connecting the step to the step definitions code. And if you ever wondered what reflection in JUnit might be, reflection in JUnit is actually finding this text and connecting it up to the code using this given annotation and executing the code beneath it. The next thing is to make sure that we can make this glue connection correctly. The username admin is going to have to match inside of our step definition. It, that capitalization does count and you happen to have a rogue space in there that can throw it off. So let's just go fix that. Next, let's visualize how this data comes in. The word admin is inside of quotes and it's being captured by this regular expression. Regular expressions aren't too scary. This is one here. It's a caret and it says starting with. However, the caret's also inside of here, but it's inside these little square brackets. In that case, it means but not, meaning but not a quote. Why would you have but not a quote? Well, to take a look at this, a backslash in a quote is a literal quote mark. So this is a literal quote mark, and this says but not a literal quote mark, and this asterisk means one or more characters that is not a single quote. And the dollar sign says, hey, this text stops here. There's nothing more that we need for the match. This may look a little scary, and you can actually look at it a different way. The parentheses tells us to capture the value, and you can use a dot asterisk with single quotes around it and get the same effect without having the quotes. Of course, you do have to make sure that your feature file matches up correctly. Now, all of this code can be done by a manual tester. You don't have to be a test automation engineer, at least at these two levels, in order to do this. Because this code can be auto-generated by the framework. Let's take a look at that. Here we have Eclipse, and we have a feature file, given the username is admin. And we're going to go and run that. When we run it, we actually get some output that says there's something horribly wrong going on. And the cool thing is that it actually gives you the lines of code to, in order to build this. And you can take this code and copy and paste it directly into a Java class in order to start building your test de step definitions. But at this point, the manual tester is out of the picture. We're going to take a look at the page steps where we took this code that was generated for us by Cucumber and we see that it is going to jump down into some feature that we're going to do at the page steps level. The page steps can have multiple lines of information that are being done. In fact, 
In this case, we're going to use the username that got passed in admin to pick up its password. This is a helper class that is going and doing some sort of lookup. And then the login pages at the bottom level that interacts with the application have other features such as entering the username, the password, and the login. Keep in mind that the step definitions and the page should be just one feature or functionality that's being called upon. However, at the login page steps, we can have multiple types of calls to the login page. In this case, we're getting the password from the username and then entering it in. Let's take one more visualization as to how all this data flows. We given the user admin, the admin comes in here as a string captured by that regular expression, passed into the login and passing it in as admin. Admin then goes into the login at the login page steps and then the login button is submitted. And at the lowest level, our login page is to perform the individual actions of taking the admin and sending it with send keys into the username field object. This is the lowest level where we interact with the applications. Keep in mind, we don't interact with the application at the page steps or the step definitions, only at the page level. Now there is another thing you can do, and that is using Serenity as an add-on to make things even more interesting. In this case, we could take this login page, which extends the page object model, and replace it with the page object that's provided by John Ferguson Smart's Serenity framework. In this case, you can use the find by web element facade to create your login button. And then this gives us more features and functionality, such as verifying that the button is actually visible before we go to click on it. There are lots of different things that are included in the Serenity and we only have time to discuss a few. Is visible means that it's going to be on the page and given a certain amount of time to wait to see if it appears. Is currently visible just means check it now, don't wait around. If it's not there, it's not coming. Is enabled means we're checking to see if this list or this button is enabled in order to click it. And is present means it's somewhere inside the HTML, but it may not necessarily be visible. Those are the fluent weights, but under here we also have assertions that are matched up exactly. We can assert that this object should be visible. It's currently visible. It should be enabled, or it should be present, or it should not be present. So these are your validation assertions that would go under our validations, and this would be our navigation that we would use fluent weights in order to ensure that our framework is robust enough to handle all sorts of different timing issues. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this quick little overview, and my name's Paul Grossman, and I'm the Dark Arts Wizard up there on Twitter. If you enjoyed this video, please check out the other ones that I've got. Have yourself a great day.